the creek. But again, uh, my dear friend, when, when we say Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, mm -hmm. you don't believe that um, he got a kind of ecclesiastical lift that uh, took him into the stratosphere. Why don't you, I believe you, that? You, you already, in your mind, if you are a thinking Christian, realize that this is language that is being used figuratively. Uh, when we speak even about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is not the revivification yes. of, of a corpse. Yes. Right. It is speaking about a tremendous reality mm. that Jesus Christ is risen his life. He doesn't believe in the resurrection and he doesn't believe in the ascension. And this is the Nobel Prize laureate, bishop of the church, feeding the flock. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Well, let's listen to Professor Marcus Borg. He's fascinating. He's also of the Jesus Seminar and a very influential theologian. What do you have to say, sir? I believe in the resurrection of Jesus, but I have absolutely no idea if it involved anything happening to his corpse. I think it's quite possible that his body was eaten by dogs, and that there was never even a full tomb, to say nothing of an empty tomb. But my basic claim here is that resurrection does not need to involve something happening to a corpse. How I understand the resurrection of Jesus is that the followers of Jesus continue to experience him as a living reality after his death. So Jesus was probably eaten by dogs. There was no resurrection. But his followers kept on experiencing him. What does that make Jesus? It makes him just a normal human being like everyone else, founder of a religion, but it certainly brings him down from where he was. Now, this is Pope Benedict speaking. And uh, he says the following. Pope Benedict meets interreligious leaders, interreligious leaders, so this is not just Christians, these are all of the religious groups together, and says, dialogue discovers truth. Washington, Pope Benedict XVI encouraged interreligious leaders to work not only for peace, but for the discovery of truth. The Pope told about 200 representatives of Islam, Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Judaism gathered at Pope John Paul II Cultural Center in Washington, April 17, to persevere in their collaboration to serve society and enrich public life. So we have to get all the religions together so that we can discover truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is Islam, Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Judaism going to do with that one? Uh, not too much, right? <laughs> Let's get rid of that one. Thy word is truth. Oh, what are all these religions going to do with that one? All thy commandments are truth. Well then, uh, the Sabbath's going to be a problem for some of them. Is that not so? So it's better that we get together as a think tank so that we can discover truth. And by definition, that truth must be a new truth which satisfies them all. We need a shift in religion. Author Patrick Campbell, who writes The Mystical Jesus, and Episcopal Bishop J.S. Spong are two of the number of individuals who have suggested that the virgin birth account clearly recognized mythological elements in our faith, 
tradition whose purpose was not to describe a literal event but to capture the transcendent dimension of God and the earthbound words and concepts of the first century human beings. Those primitive human beings of the first century. Do you know what? We read the writings of Paul and we scratch our head and we say they're so profound it takes a huge study to even to begin to comprehend them. But when we think of the first century, we think of these primitive people walking around with clubs. Now Funk is another man from the Jesus Seminar. We've heard some of their professors speaking. Let's hear what he has to say. He says, we should give Jesus a demotion. It is no longer credible to think of Jesus as divine. Jesus' divinity goes together with the old theistic way of thinking about God. The plot, these are Christians, please remember, the plot early Christians invented for a divine redeemer figure is as archaic as the mythology, mythology in which it is framed. A Jesus who drops down out of heaven performs some magical act that frees human beings from the power of sin, rises from the dead and returns to heaven is simply no longer credible. Now please note that it's not just Funk who is saying this. Who else said it? Bishop Desmond Tutu, one of the leading figures in the Anglican Church. He says the same thing. This is not sideline this is mainstream the notion that he will return at the end of time and sit in cosmic judgment is equally incredible we must find a new plot for a more credible Jesus wow we need a think tank in re-articulating the vision of Jesus we should take care to express ourselves in the same register as he employed in his parables and aphorisms, paradox, hyperbole, exaggeration, metaphor. Further, our reconstructions of his vision should be provisional, always subject to modification and correction. Isn't that fascinating? Thy word is truth. And the Bible says, do not add and do not detract. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Jesus Christ says, Hebrew 13, 8, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No, these modern theologians are saying, no, 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 no. We need modification and correction. We must correct the Bible. Here's another funk quote, speaking about the commandments of God. Written with the finger of God, mind you. A Christianity without God must reject the commandments of God. The Father and Jesus Christ thus giving way to moral re relativism. That's what I say. Funk proclaimed, The Bible does not contain fixed objective standards of behavior that should govern human behavior for all time. This includes the Ten Commandments as well as the admonitions of Jesus. Let's get rid of them, says Funk. The coming of the Radical Reformation. We don't need the Ten Commandments. And we don't need the admonitions of Jesus. So we'll just scratch them out of the Bible as unnecessary baggage. Isaiah has something else to say. Isaiah chapter 5, 20 to 24. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as the dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Does it qualify, yes or no? Yes. 